Hi, this is Lee Davis, one of the pastors here at Berlin Church in Lewis Center. And I'm Rick Negley, and we're glad to have this time to share a few moments with you. We're following up in regard to Pastor Rick's teaching from Sunday, from the beginning of John chapter 21. And the emphasis from the sermon was on Jesus' consistent welcome of his people. So this is Thursday when you are receiving this video. On Tuesday, the follow-up video that we sent out was about how we struggle to believe that Jesus will actually welcome us because of the struggles we have internally. And then we also talked about why it is that we can trust that Jesus will always welcome us despite the fact that we know we are still sinners. Today we want to talk a little bit about how we extend this welcoming grace toward other people. So Rick, what does it look like in this season and beyond to extend welcoming grace to other people, sinful like us? In this season, it's somewhat challenging because the normal ways that most of us like to share a welcome is by welcoming people into our homes, maybe to share a meal together, to share an evening of some kind of fun activity together. And that's just not possible right now. But I've seen examples on social media of some of our own people and others who are finding creative ways to extend the grace that they've received in Christ and the welcome that they've received in him to others. And so I've seen pictures of uh, notes taped on a storm door so that it can be read from inside through the glass, an encouraging note, a a note of love and, and blessing to those who are living there. I have seen uh, and heard about meals that were delivered to a porch and left there instead of inviting someone into your own home to share a meal, to purchase uh, a meal at a restaurant and perhaps support a a restaurant that's in a difficult season and then take that food and deliver it to someone. And things that we can do in every season, we can write notes of encouragement, we can send encouraging text messages, we can share verses of scripture that are helpful and encouraging to us, and I've been the recipient of some of those things during this season especially, and knowing that those cards were actually touched by another human, and and I'm not afraid of the germs, we disinfect them if we need to, but it's just a wonderful thing to know that there was an actual human touch there, and that someone cared enough to share that love and grace with us. As we tend to think beyond this season, Two of the things that come to mind for me in regard to how we can welcome one another are in the area of forgiveness and in the area of affirmation. Let me explain what I mean by that. The truth of the matter is, if God treated us according to our behavior, we would all be doomed. But he doesn't. He treats us according to the righteousness of Jesus, which has been applied to us, which was not fair. It was not just. Frankly, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it is the gospel. And it has been said that once the gospel seems like it's too good to be true, we are just starting to get it. So it seems too good to be true that God would welcome us despite the many sins that we commit, and yet he does. And so it should be that we learn to treat each other like that as well, not being so hard on each other, certainly not taking sin lightly, but recognizing that we are sinners and we live among other sinners, spouses and children and friends. And so we have to learn to cut each other a break sometimes, especially in a season like this where we're living in such close proximity to our families. In fact, I think that one of the clearest expressions of the fact that we believe and embrace the gospel of Jesus is that we are not just willing to forgive each other, but we delight in doing so. That we're not cold-shouldering people, that we don't make people earn our forgiveness, but that we're actually poised, postured toward forgiveness. Secondly, I think affirmation is a really important way for us to express the love of Jesus. If the Bible is anything, it's a love letter to his people. That may seem a little sappy to you, but the scriptures teach us that God is love, and God is never afraid to tell his people that he loves them. And Jesus was never afraid to show compassionate love toward other people. And so just as God speaks his love to us, we can speak love toward one another and gratitude toward one another and recognition that God is at work in each other. Words of affirmation indicate to other people that we are thoughtful, that we are paying attention to them, that we are sensitive to them, and that we welcome them into our very presence. And so in these ways and more, we are able to emulate the gracious love of Jesus and welcome them into our lives. Rick, any final thoughts today? Well, just to be reminded that Jesus does welcome us, that he invites us to be with him, and 
because we receive that welcome from him, we are enabled then to extend it to others. So I encourage you to seek the Lord. Ask him, what are some creative ways that we can do that in this season and beyond? And may you be blessed in that. To our Berlin Church family and to our guests, we love you.